Greetings, you soon-to-be-consumed organics, and welcome back to Stellaris with me, Oathrix. And, of course, welcome to an excuse to play as a hive mind. For those who've been around for a while, you will know I absolutely adore hive minds, but I also find the gameplay to be a little bit on the samey side. So if there's any excuse at all that I can play a hive mind and there's a reason to play it, I'm gonna play it. So today we are playing as the Hungering Mold, a devouring swarm, which is all here to test out the idea of our hive minds, in fact, the best wide empire at the moment, because they get a lot of bonuses which waive the effects of the empire size modifiers. So straight away, they have the empire modifier minus 25% to the exact effect of the empire size, so it doesn't actually change how big the empire gets, it's just less penalties for being a very, very wide empire. On top of that, it has things like Subsumed Will, which decreases um, empire size from pops by 20%. It then has another one, which, which decreases... There we are. The empire size from planets by 50%. And then I've went ahead and with my main species, I've made them docile, giving them another minus 10%, which means straight away, we can play very wide and simply not have as many penalties. On top of this, the hive mind is very good at just grabbing everything. Its populations grow quickly. I'm adding budding here because I find that quite fun so we can grow our pops even faster. And I really do think this might be one of the more powerful playstyles at the moment. Now, of course, the Devouring Swarm is already very powerful. That's why we're not going to have scaling difficulty on. We are going to be in max, max difficulty. And I just want to see if we can completely ignore the Empire size system and play normally with our Empire. Now, which origin do I actually want to go with? I wasn't even thinking about this until just now. So, I've decided just to go with Prosperous Unification. We are going with Subsumed Will over, where are you, Divided Attention, just because I want that extra Edict Fund straight away, so we can get some more benefits for the Empire. Maybe this one will be better, since we are going to be grabbing every single world we can, but for now, that's what we're sticking with. Now, I'd really love Adaptive, but the problem is, I don't really have any double negatives I want to take. For instance, Repugnant, I find really, really annoying on a hive mind. Hive minds already, I find amenities to be a bit boring to try and sort out, so I don't want that to be any worse. We'll grab Adaptive as we naturally progress throughout the game. So, with that, let's get started. All the usual stuff, scaling difficulty off though, and now we are really going. We're just on a medium galaxy, and let's just see how we do. Consuming all we can see against enemies which are going to be far more powerful. Hopefully we can expand early on. Hey everyone, a future Lathrix here, as is tradition with these full playthroughs. Now before I say anything else, did you know that the endgame crisis start date has seemingly been changed in the recent patch? It's no longer 50 years after you set the endgame date. Because past Lathrix didn't know this, past Lathrix thought he had a lot of time. So, as you can imagine, there's a bit of chaos in this video, with the end of the galaxy arriving at a date that past Lathrix really didn't expect. A bit of a spoiler, but something you really need to know going into this, because wow does it change all the perspective of some of past Lathrix's choices near the end. Now, this was a super fun video to record. I simply recorded this because I fancied recording a hive mind playthrough. I am still sorting out part two of the last four playthrough. That will be out in the next few weeks. It is super busy here, but I just really wanted to record this, and I'm so glad I did. So, as usual, though, I must shill for the video. These videos can be absolute poison for the channel if they don't get interaction, comments, likes, etc. So if you do like this sort of video, which is why I am on YouTube in the first place, the long format is exactly what I like to record, then consider interacting. It really does help. Simple as that. So, I really do hope you've enjoyed the video. It was super fun to record, and hopefully over the next few weeks, I may get more time, so more videos more frequently. But at the moment, life is chaos, and we just have to get on with it. Now into the video. And so we begin near the galactic center. So our only real goal is to expand as fast as possible, get all those lovely space resources and try our best to find some decent worlds. Realistically, I'm not going to be focusing on Unity at all. I know Unity is now super important, but Unity is going to be a secondary. We want to focus on tech and alloys, and that's pretty much it for a very, very long time. We will naturally get expansion to begin with anyway, just from the passive Unity, and we're likely going to grab Imperial Prerogative, decreasing Empire size on planets by an additional 50%, just because it fits the whole theme of what we're trying to do today. But that's pretty much it. 
as we expand, we will, of course, eventually have some proper Unity worlds. But for now, tech is the most important thing. And even though we are going to be super aggressive, we are still going to do this to get some alloys. Lovely. Sell those, grab those, and I would like some tech. I always forget something when I do that. Eh, it's not much, but it's nice to begin with. A warm welcome indeed. We are instantly at war. So they declared war on us. They did have a very large fleet, but I moved my corvettes into position. They simply ran away. I doubt they can get past both of these. Yeah, hangar bays this early on are lovely. So I'm just going to sitting here. Honestly, um, I don't think I'm going to be able to really make any advances on them, but I also don't think they're going to make any advances on us. I am now spending all of my alloys on my military. So maybe we'll be able to. Our economy is looking pretty decent outside of minerals at the moment, and that's going to fix itself up as I continue to expand. It's because I'm just spending so much on alloys and on tech, which both cost minerals. But yeah, we're just going to sit there. We found some primitives, and so we're now devouring them, giving us food and a little bit of society research. And we've one of our drones so that we don't lose the uh, world afterwards. There's an ocean world there as well, which is great. I currently don't see the enemy fleets. I know they have stronger fleets than us. We now have that info on them. I just haven't seen them in a while. So what I think I'm going to do is just grab that and run back so, yeah. so we can see them. I mean, would it be worth rushing their main starbase here? There's one of their fleets. Because if we can grab the starbase, we could use that to defend. I'm not too sure. I think I'm just going to play it safe for now. Okay, change of plan. We attacked while they were attacking that starbase, and they instantly ran out. Which means for a short while, that one fleet at least won't be able to fight us. Okay, there's a 1k fleet there. Darn, the station didn't go down fast enough. Got to face everything at once. Not really what I wanted. Good, good, good. Come on, hurry up. Thank you. Technology okay, they're not going to be able to get through here at least. Our bastion is pretty darn strong. So now it's now ground forces over here and then make a corridor at the right moment. If we can grab their homeworld, we've basically won this. Loads and loads of food now. As we devour everything. Technology conceived. We have found an anomaly. Is that their final world? If so, I don't want to take it straight away, though at the same time, war exhaustion is gonna force peace soon, so I don't really know what to do here. Just have the ground forces nearby, so the second that war exhaustion hits near zero, we can just take the world. So we now have divided attention as well, meaning that, yeah, right now our planets don't actually give us any empire size. Divided attention is minus 50%, so is imperial prerogative. Our worlds are free in terms of our empire size. The swarm is expanding ever faster with each passing year. Everything will be us. The mold will cover this entire galaxy. The rot will set in. Now, um, outside of all that, we are just outright dominating this foe. For some reason, they're weaker than the previous one. I think maybe they've been at war previously. They've had like a few 900 fleets, but nothing really to resist us at all. There's not really much else to talk about, except for the world we just grabbed is lush, giving extra food, which does actually apply to those being perched. <laughs> Which is pretty sad, really. Your world's so beautiful, we sit there a little bit longer for a picnic. That's all. Nice and sweet, really. Had to stop for the war for the time being. There is what I think is an advanced start next to us now. They are obviously very angry at us, as you would imagine. And I can't even get past here because of the nebula until our science vessel gets here. So, I've stopped this war. I can devour them later. I've devoured pretty much everything. Just the, these four worlds left. Gonna keep 
our main fleet here, and I'm going to sell everything to try and make a small bastion just so we can hide out here, because I can't imagine they won't declare war. They keep on considering attacking and then not. Thankfully, that's given us a lot of time to reinforce. They do have, like, another 5k fleet somewhere, so we have at least 15k minimum. Get them all their split. Honestly, I feel like I got very lucky there. They definitely had the fleet power to take me out, but they separated early on, which allowed us to get those few extra kills, and that's what allowed us to hold them off along with our Bastion. We actually managed to get two worlds out of that. Now, one of them is Continental, which is actually useful. One of them is Arctic, which is useless, but at least we've taken them from the enemy, and we'll get some minerals while we devour them. We do need to start getting some more minerals ourselves, because our tech also takes up minerals, and I'm trying to go more heavily into tech at the moment, so... Yeah. Ooh, interesting. So the Oracle. Yeah, it's Month of Unity now, isn't it? Um, yeah, definitely. Technology it's a permanent plus 10% Unity, and considering I'm not going very heavily into Unity, that's nice. It kind of props that up a bit. So I've got to that point of the Purifier Run Weapon, which everyone wants to destroy me. So we are at war with the small empire over here, which I'm not particularly scared of. We are at war, of course, with this one, and we've just engaged their fleets. Our special project is complete. Glory to the Swarm. And I'm probably going to force this into a status quo as soon as I can, so I'm just grabbing everything. Because I need to get back and try and defend here as well now. That's a lot of food I've just taken. Oh, we get a Gaia world. Fantastic. How are we looking over here? Okay, it looks like to beat them back for... Oh, that's an 11k. Okay, we need to... Oh, we're so close to status quo. Um, you... You both merge? Oh, I would love to grab that world, but I don't think I'm going to be able to. Yeah, that is too strong. We're too split at the moment. We are building some battleships now, though. Over here, it looks like we might be able to finally finish off this empire, though, so I can stop attacking me and being annoying. We've run out of gas, of course. I'm spending everything right now. Trying to keep things going. This will be the final battle of this war, I think. Could we risk grabbing this world? I think we can. When the fleet gets there, because taking out any of their worlds makes them a lot weaker, so obviously taking out that big world there is great for us. I think I took out its ground forces, so it's looking a lot better for us now. I don't know how I'm meant to split up my forces. I need more forces, but I need to keep these over here. And uh, It's just a right mess. Gonna make a Corvette Swarm over here, I think. Uh, over here, we're building up a new fleet, which I'm, I want to keep here, because I don't know where this wormhole goes. I've kind of just realised. I also need a construction vessel to go around and start grabbing all the rare resources I've been kind of ignoring. Since this is all from early expansion, where I didn't actually have the tech to grab them. Oh wow, it's a 10k. Oh god, there's a 10k. Okay, so as soon as we can stay at square, I'd recommend doing so. Though, at the same time, we are about to invade their Technology capital. Conceived. Oh sorry, we are invading their capital. It's definitely worth the try. That was an absolute mess of a war. Okay, so we've grabbed loads of their worlds, including their home world, their capital, so that's a huge deal for us. 
They've taken one of our worlds. I managed to defend our Gaia world. Oh my god, I just about ended the war in time. We need to prepare to take out this empire once and for all. Um, same goes for this empire over here. They're both just too strong. The two advanced starts are just still really fighting. So you know what? Credit to the update. It's definitely made them a lot better at dealing with their resources and actually having an army to fight with. I've once again also made our species docile. So only a 51% malice to our tech cost, and that's pretty good considering now our empire size. For now, though, I think I just need to focus on sorting everything out. What I really need is gateways, so I'm just not getting the tech. So I'm not really too sure what to do right now. We have loads of nest worlds, which are turning into proper worlds. That's basically means colonies. And we're at peace with the two empires next to us. I, of course, want to get this back eventually, but... There's no real rush. They're definitely massively weak and now took their home system and a load of their main worlds, so they're not too much of a threat to me anymore. This is a bigger threat, but that's going to be a while before we can go to war again. So I think we should just try and prepare to attack the Forerunners over here, the Xenophiles. We could attack the Xenophobes, but if I'm correct, they have stronger fleets. So they have 240-odd thousand fleet power, and if I'm correct, they're mostly shields and armor with very little hull. I think. Yeah, it's all in their shields and armor, so if we have our battleships change over to the Archimit to try and get the second version of that tech, and try and upgrade our strikecraft past basic, I think we'll be good to go. So in the next 15 odd years, try to go to war with one of the Fallen Empires and take their home world. Well, we're under a surprise attack here. Now thankfully, we are going to be able to defend, I think, I think every choke point once some of our fleets move into position we're attack from the kingdom and this, these fellows over here from earlier. So once I get everyone in position then we can start attacking back. We are still building fleets in the background. Everything will be fine. Technology conceived. Recess Glory to the swarms. You see, combined, you have my fleet power. But you ain't combined, and that's the problem with this war. I'm just gonna wait here now. Then I'll bring some of my ground forces through, bombard this, and we get a world. Now, we have lost one world straight away, which is one over here. I decided not to even try and defend it because, yeah, too many fleets. We can defend this bastion easily. I've got a second fleet currently moving to defend down here, which should be okay, and I can move my fleets in soon. And I now finally have the tech for alloy. Okay, so I've lost two of my fleets over here. Uh, a much larger fleet is on its way slowly. I'm finally building a gateway over there. I was building a gateway. What happened? I was building a gateway, and I can't remember cancelling it, but for some reason I did. Maybe an enemy spawned here for a second or got here. Yeah, that's why the colony ships are sitting there. Okay, building a gateway there, building a gateway at our core. We have a gateway over here already. We'll build a gateway out here after the fighting. Forgot to claim that system back. Essentially, either of, these, either of these empires wouldn't stand a chance versus me, but together they are being incredibly annoying again. I am, however, now turning myself into the crisis. Not so much because I actually want to end the game by destroying the galaxy, but I just want some of the bonuses. How do we have space piracy? There of all. Oh, I get it. Yeah, because that's connected to that. And clearly, there's trade value flowing between the mandates. That's really annoying. I mean, it's not that annoying, so really annoying is a bit of an overstatement, but it is annoying nonetheless. Okay, I've got two of the worlds so far. A lot of population being devoured, which is rapidly getting us to stage three here, which is great for ship build speed and everything else. So that's great. I could swap over now to the menacing stuff, but I think I'll just stick with the battleships at this point. Okay, we have 40k here, so I can go on the offensive as long as I'm careful. Let's even take that back. You want to clean up that. I think we're just going to lose that Gaia world. We might be able to get that back, but we're going to gain a lovely chunk over here. 
And once that pushes them back, we could also go for their capital, though I doubt it. So the weirdest thing keeps happening. I keep getting slug brine hosts. I only very briefly had that event, and I stopped it because I didn't want the... Well, I just didn't want them, honestly, because of the slower population growth, and I wanted to focus on anything else. Anyway, the point is I didn't get it in the end just because I didn't want them for a myriad of reasons, even if it was probably a bad choice. But I still keep on getting the leaders as if I have it. I shouldn't complain, but that just seems wrong since I don't have the populations. Oof, look at this. Okay, finally grabbed all these worlds. Look at that, lovely loads of food and a lovely chunk of society. Our first mega structure is complete. We are slowly fixing up our precursor's ring world. One section at a time. It is taking a while. Now, thankfully, I'm about to hit Galactic Nemesis. This is when I get this, the plus 50% to my weapons damage, which is the main thing I want, so I can go and fight the Fallen Empires and everything else. I have now got the tech for the better... Oh, that's really annoying. They've just... Yeah, okay, that's what saying. Uh, they're kind of overwhelming me here, but over here we are almost killing the Empire completely, so... Not a complete loss, just annoying. But yeah, with the plus 50%, we can probably attack the Fallen Empire soonish. We're a little bit behind where I want to be, but we're still looking pretty good. There we go, that's it. We are now at plus 50% weapons damage, and that's pretty much all I wanted. Once I go here, everyone will declare war on us, which isn't what we want. Oh, the Privateers! I completely forgot I was setting that up. Yeah, I was doing the um, espionage mission to spawn in the Privateers, and well, they have. Didn't really help me much, really out the way, but it worked. I've never got that to work in a while, which is actually useful. Okay, now that both of these fleets are here, you can't really do any damage to me. I'm going to completely destroy this Empire, then I think I'm going to get back to my original plan, which is building up to attack a fallen Empire. That's annoying, the wormholes connect the two Empires. Where even is that? Is it that wormhole? I guess it has to be. But we're right... Okay, we're about to take loads of their worlds, though, and they don't have any ground forces with them. We're going to lose loads of systems. That's really annoying. Do I status quo here or not? Ah, we've devoured so much. Fine. I'll take this world back, since it's a Gaia world, and then after that, I will status quo. Then get ready to attack one of the Fallen Empires. I've actually decided to go against this one instead, because they keep on yelling at me. Whoa. Didn't expect them to be that angry. Oh, okay, so I wasn't really paying attention to this. I thought it was an event I've had before, but it wasn't. Relic Rails. So, underneath our colony, there was an entire complex, and from that, we've managed to get plus 5% engineering research speed and plus 2% society research speed for 12 years. Not bad. There's been quite a few new random things, um, so I'll just have a quick read about what this is actually about, and I'll summarise it, then I'll go through it slowly if you'd like to pause and read it yourself. Uh, just, it was a civilization on the world. There were some corpses which have managed to be preserved of the original molluscoids here, and another alien at some point was here as well, which got trapped while trying to do the same thing we were doing, that is, having a look-see. So this world's had a lot of things happen. And that's the very basic version of it, at least, as far as I can read. Probably something to do what's in the atmosphere. So if you'd like to read these, feel free to pause, I'll quickly go through them. I would love to read these in full, but again, full playthrough, we don't really have time. So the Molluscoids came from a technophobic society, which became more insular over time, and then attacked them. They were an offshoot which wanted to grow on another planet, and by the looks of things, they got destroyed by their original homeworld. Well, at least we've got something shiny. And we got some information from the poor reptile who died as well. The Peeps is what they were called. I'm calling them Peeps. It isn't one of the Fallen Empires, is it? Like what? Like what species is you? Sebians and no, it wasn't either of you. Okay. 
Our fleets are just about ready to attack on the Fallen Empires. I'm just waiting for the jump drives to drop. And then we're going to just go straight for their home world and hopefully tank it. We do have a lot of ground forces since we do now have the very, very beautiful Xenomorphs. Wow, they obliterated that so quickly I didn't get to see the fight. I was trying to actually view that one. Okay, they're going to head to us. So there's no point of us jumping since we can use their Citadel here. The Preserve is about to be taken over by our Xenomorphs. Oh, no, no, they are in fact moving away. That's annoying. We can jump in their way before they reach our territory. That's kind of the plan at the moment. Wow. We are so focused on damage with our fleets. Like, our defense is actually pretty poor on our ships, but the actual damage is atrociously strong. Yay for being the crisis event, I suppose. Yeah, we're not going to be able to chase them down, but I'll try. Okay, they're splitting, which is annoying. You're going this way. Really wish I didn't split. I mean, I could split my forces as well, but I don't know if half of my fleets after the jump effect is in place, so they're doing less damage, are actually able to take that. Oh, I thought you were a little bit stronger than you were. Uh, do you have any more ground forces I can jump in? I know I was building some more somewhere. Is it just there? No, there they are. Okay. Can you please get here? I thought I was already sending you on the way. I hate how fast their fleets are. And this is with the gas for fuel thing I've currently got going on. So I have extra sublight speed. Oh, I do have the Blade of the Huntress, actually. I just jump so quickly. Okay, yeah, well, I'm going to have to do it. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four. Okay, they're clearly going to go this way, so please get there. Our space hive is lost. Then the rest of you, I'll send over to here, once I see where they're moving, and intercept that way. God damn, we just melt them. Archimitters of all the bonus damage, it's just insane. Are you actually... Oh, that's annoying. Where are you heading then? If you're in this way... Could we go into the wormhole, which would actually be really bad for us. Well, we can probably status quo at any time, yeah, and we are currently invading the homeworlds, so it doesn't matter too much, because we don't necessarily need to completely wipe them out. We're just here, mostly, to take their homeworld, so it doesn't matter too, too much. Oh, I keep... I always forget this. Even though I am a devourer, I am one of the purifier species, it doesn't matter to the Fallen Empire. They don't care, so our war type is isn't to be exterminated, so it doesn't matter if they grab some systems in the slightest. It won't help them. I completely forgot that, and it makes going to war with the Fallen Empires infinitely easier, so we are definitely going to be able to just completely devour both of them completely. Just 100% of them will be eaten. They will be delicious. Well, now all that's taken, I'm going to go over here and take out the Void Cloud. This will give us Cloud Lightning. Um, because of the bonus damage, I'm now realising that the weapons which pierce through shields and armour, their normal weakness is just they're weaker, um, pure damage-wise than the other weapons. Their strength, of course, being ignores all shields and armour, so it's only against the hull. Well, with our damage, I've never seen ships quite melt through a Fallen Empire this well. So what we're going to do is take out the Void Clouds, that'll give us Cloud Lightning, which is also piercing through shields and armor, and that's what we're going to go with. We're going to be pretty much ignoring Strikecraft from now. So I guess I'm hoping the Unbidden is going to be our... Uh, the Unbidden or the Contingency? Well, actually, no, the Contingency of our Wide Empire would be a nightmare. I actually have no idea who I hope is going to be the enemy. Yeah, I guess... Yeah, I guess it is the Unbidden, so we can just go through their shields and armor with this, but I guess... Uh, this also means I can focus on energy weapon damage, which means I can swap quite easily to anti-scourge stuff, so it's all good. The Forerunners have been removed. We're now also getting their tech, so we'll have all the Dark Matter tech soon. We're actually getting quite a bit of Dark Matter, we're just selling it right now. So that's all well and good. We have all the worlds, so what I need to do is remove a lot of the districts, because otherwise what we're going to have is way too much Empire size. Though it's only increasing our tech by 110%, on the last run that was so much higher. And for a much smaller empire as well. 
I'll deal with these as the population grows. That is the problem with the purifier species. You do get all these worlds, but you get the worlds essentially from scratch, since you don't get any, any of the populations. Yeah, some of these are going to be a bit crazy, aren't they? Just need to be careful not to destroy too many, because otherwise I'll end up losing all the building slots. Uh, I don't really know what to do with these worlds. I mean, little Gaia worlds, which is fantastic. I guess could turn them into just energy or tech or something. Lovely. Okay, our fleets are all getting over here. Yeah, you do have an extra fleet. I thought you did. The xenophobes being the militarist ones. Oddly enough, good at the whole military thing. Crushing As per usual, they're splitting up, which is great for us. Soon enough, we'll have this fallen empire as well. Ooh, and that's moving forwards, though I don't have the alloys currently to do anything about it since I've put them all into building way more battleships. Guess I could have stopped them for now. It is more important that I get that sorted. Surprised they didn't attack me. I wonder who would have won. Uh, I guess I would have won still. Yeah, I do have the fleet advantage and my fleet is pretty much counter to theirs, so it's a pretty obvious answer there. So, you go there, take that. The rest of the ground forces are on their way. Just going to take all the citadels. Our space hide is lost. Which space hive is lost? Though again, I think, yep, same as before, it really doesn't matter if they do grab our stuff. <laughs> well, that's interesting. If you pause it at just the right moment, you can have like an unlimited amount of flickering from when the ground forces land. It's pretty. I mean, it's pretty, but I'm also devouring the population of an entire world right now, but it's pretty. Both the Fallen Empires have... Rotted away. Well, we aren't going to just sit around doing nothing, so let's move on. Jump you there so you can start exploring. Everyone else, please stick together. Actually, can one of the fleets just go ahead and grab all that? That would be lovely. Going after this empire, because honestly, it's just kind of in the way. This way, we have access now to much all of the galaxy. We'll try and clear out the mandate afterwards, which is going to be an absolute nightmare. But once we grab that, we've pretty much taken over most of the galaxy. This one, on the other hand, has no allies. Uh, no one likes it. Everyone hates it. Oh, actually, no, it has recently made a non-aggression pact before it hadn't, so wow, what a shame. You were just becoming friends with someone. Friendship is not allowed here. I'll split you all up once we get a bit further forwards. The AI was doing a very good job keeping up with me up until, I'd say, maybe 15 years ago. At that point, I'd just taken over so much of the galaxy and all the worlds had started to mature that, yeah, it's not really a challenge against the AI empires now. So it is just take over every other empire, just keep on being at war, keep on devouring everything. And then once the endgame crisis arrives, we'll see how well we can deal against that. Ooh, actually, I've just looked. Going to war with these fellas is perfect, because we're going to completely surround these guys. Although they do have that one wormhole into my territory. I think, was it this one? No, I thought they had a wormhole into my territory. Or was I just thinking about these? Either way, we can quite easily surround them. I'll double check with the wormholes and everything before. And finally take them out, because they've been so annoying as well. Then the entity will be surrounded, so it'll be these fellas, then them, then the entity... And eventually this one, which is just... I, I'm putting it off because it's going to be such a annoying war. Well, we found Earth. Delicious humans. One more empire has uh, succumbed to its mold problem. Let's leave it that for now. Okay, and let's get all of you over there as well. You're moving forwards. I'll split you up once you're a bit further in. Just go for all of their... Star bases because they have so so many. You're going that way, you're going that way. You can start dealing with all this. 
Oh, that's annoying. That's a nebula. Uh, in that case, you're going around the awkward way because I didn't realize that. Get there, take over that wormhole. I don't think they've got open borders with the entity. So that shouldn't be a threat, but just in case, I'll leave you there so you can jump and defend if needed. Okay, all is good, and you, please follow these fellas. Well, once again, it's been a pretty straightforward war. My energy reserves are really tanking at the moment since I'm pumping everything into research and alloys. Mostly research now, we're at 22k, which isn't as good as it seems with the plus 150% um, tech cost. As the church starts ringing outside my window. Well, the church is against us right now. So, uh, yeah, uh, we're also fighting the Entity because the Entity declared war on this Empire while I was devouring it and got in my way. So, they took an opportunity and so did we. And right now, the galaxy looks like a moldy, moldy apple. Delicious. Excuse me, coming through. Excuse me. Excuse me. Stop attacking me, I'm just trying to get through. I love that one little hit at the end. Oh, we finished them off. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, they weren't even um, a target. Whoopsie daisy. Keep getting stationed so fast as well. That's definitely part of the reason why our energy reserve looks so dreadful at the moment. Uh, can you please destroy them? That'd be great. Okay. So what mega structures have we got? Okay, two ruined ones over there. Do you get any functional ones? Ooh, that's a science nexus being upgraded. Okay, well, I can only build one at a time, but at least we're going to get, like, phase one of it built for free. That's good. So once I finally finish off the next one of my tradition trees, not going unity is taking so long. I'm not sure what to go for. Master builders would be fantastic. Now we have all these ruined uh, mega structures, but at the same time, I do kind of just want Defender of the Galaxy. Oh, wait, can you actually have Defender of the Galaxy and become the Crisis? That would be nice. It's not long until the endgame crisis, and although we are very powerful, honestly, our fleets are a bit... Uh, not the best. I've definitely seen a lot stronger. A lot stronger. Well, that's not possible. What? The endgame crisis shouldn't be available till 2350. They've changed it, haven't they? They've changed how the endgame works. So it's no longer 50 years after for the crisis. Oh, I'm doomed. Um, yeah, I didn't know that, so I wasn't planning... Oh, I am absolutely... Do no, I'm not. I'm not. Because it is... Okay. <laughs> okay, <laughs> this, is, this is very problematic. <laughs> okay, so because it's the Scourge, that means we can hard counter them quite easily with Strikecraft to remove a lot of their damage and then go pure energy de uh, weapons after that. Swap out from our Cloud Lightning and go back to the Neutron Launchers. We do have a lot of fleet power, so we just need to go boop, 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 and completely armor up, which is kind of what we've been going with anyway. Uh, I have Afterburners right now purely because we're doing wars like this, so I need my fleets to move around so quickly, but swap those out as well, I guess. Um, yeah, and have a mix of them. If they spawn in somewhere away from our capital, it's going to be okay. I am building gateways everywhere, so getting to them won't be a problem. I won't be able to take out their scouting fleet, almost certainly, depending on how long they take. Uh, I definitely, definitely need to rush this, though, so... My economy is about to be very problematic right now, but I'm going to stay at quo with both of these wars. I don't care. Get all my fleets back and start prepping for this. Wow. Yeah, I need to read, read the patch notes right now. The annoying thing is I could have definitely won by now by just going down the existential threat route and, you know, building the engine to destroy the galaxy. But no, I had to try and do it this way because I wanted to prove that a wide empire hive mind would be powerful. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ugh, got him. Yes, yeah, so I've got over a mil fleet power, so I can take out one of their scout fleets. It's, it is the weirdest thing with the Scourge. You can hard counter their larger craft a lot better than their smaller craft. The larger craft relies so much on missiles and strike craft. If you have strike craft and outnumber them, you will remove almost all of their damage. The little fellas, although they also have missiles, do have the Acid Blast, which is a normal attack and you can't actually block that, so... The, the scouting waves are actually scarier to me, even though they're a lot weaker looking, because obviously smaller numbers. Now, this is all before as well. We reactivate all of these. 
So we are a little bit stronger than it looks, but still. I'm trying to upgrade all my ships. Are all my ships here now? Is that everything? Yes, it is. Okay. You're building a gateway there. I'm building another gateway all the way over here now. I thought I was building a gateway over here, but thankfully the um, wormholes do actually provide quite a bit of cover. Uh, I think we might be okay. I think we might be okay. This is so early. Well, on the upside, it does seem like the game is being kind with how long it's taking for them to spawn in. Maybe it's because of how early it's spawned. I, do I honestly don't know. I did look at the patch notes. I couldn't find anything to do with the endgame crisis being changed. But, of course, before now, it would have been 2350 because I set the endgame date to 2300, and the crisis spawns 50 years after that, except for the unbidden, which can spawn early because of its own rules. But still... It's fine. It's fine. I'm not freaking out at all. I don't want to lose now. It's too... We're just too far into the game. I don't want to lose now. Well, the swarm's here. I don't even know where it was. I wasn't paying attention. Because I'm smart like They are... Okay, that's not the wor uh, It's a little bit annoying there. But it's not the worst for us. Is everything upgraded? I really don't know if we're going to be able to deal with the scouts, to be perfectly honest, but I don't think it really matters. Don't really have a say in this. Really wish we had this territory so we could move here a bit more freely, but it's fine. Let's go. Yeah, I really don't, I really don't want to go to war with them, that's the thing. Hey everyone, future Lathrix here. So while editing this, I've realised that past Lathrix really doesn't articulate a few points very clearly here, so rather than putting in his ramble, I'm here to try and make a little bit more sense of it. So this full playthrough was mostly about having research and everything else while still playing a wide empire, but ignoring the new empire-sized system and ignoring all of those negatives because hive minds are good at that and really going into that. So having the species be docile and everything else just to remove as much empire size as possible and negate a lot of the negatives. The problem with the Scourge suddenly arriving is that kind of went out of the window because the Empire size continued to grow, but now alloys are needed really desperately to constantly make fleets. Lathrix doesn't really mention that, at least past Lathrix doesn't, future Lathrix does. Uh, because of that, it comes across as a bit weird with the Empire, with a lot of the worlds being a bit ignored because it was all just chaos, and past Lathrix has the attention span of a potato rolling down a hill. So, I still think the Wide Empire could have worked, but instead of getting more research, which could have easily ended up in the 30 to 40k mark by the end of the video, we ended up with over 6,000 alloys as profit at one point, and loads more alloys being purchased, and worlds being a little bit ignored because micromanagement with all the chaos going on didn't really happen. This war lasted many, many hours in the real world, and past Lathrix kind of lost all attention at one point. I don't know what happened. I think he was tired. But yeah, so the whole thing still could have worked, but alloys were more important. Back to the video. Oh god, that was rambly as well. Maybe all Lathrixes are just one. Crushing well, here's to being dumb. Oh no, the storm is a bad thing. The storm is a really bad thing. I can't see. I can't see because of the storm. I literally can't see what's around us. I'm going in blind. Okay, so we can destroy their big fleets. That's lovely to know, but we're also going to take some casualties, right? No. Yes. <laughs> oh god, we're doomed. Okay, right now I just want to clean up all this. So I can get to that position there. Uh, am I still making fleets? Please say they're almost ready. Almost. I'll try and send those in as well. Oh, here's the problem with going in blind. On the upside, yeah, the storm did make it a lot better for us, but it's not great. I've just realised as well, I've had to do something. Oh, 
Come on, win. Thank you. Yeah, the storm is fantastic. If a bit terrible, because again, that shouldn't have done so much damage to us, but I got ambushed by two. No, why, why change target? That's great. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, got a brood queen. That's awesome. But why? Oh, if I just focus on that on then swap, that'd have been so much less painful. Okay, we're still doing great. Athletes are clearly very good versus the Scourge, because that was a few really bad situations which we didn't end up completely destroyed in. So that's good. That That's good. That, that you know, good. Wow, you really wanted to run into that vibe. That was odd, but okay. <laughs> oh, that was really right in there. Oh, there must be a world there, because it's not being taken. That's really irritating. Um, oh, no, I need to get back to destroy those over there. No, we need to... Okay, let's focus on this fleet for now. Still building up forces. We're doing okay. Okay, I've just noticed that the colour of the skirts have changed. Uh, this is actually the next day at this point. That's really weird. I don't, I don't like the grey skirt. It kind of split. It kind of um, goes between the two, and occasionally it turns purple. I don't quite understand why it does that. Our swarm is lost. By the way, we continue with trying to save our. Uh, systems. I've actually jumped my fleet so they're a bit weaker right now, so I'm surprised they actually did so well in that fight. But um, yeah, I had to jump because we need to get back as- oh no! Oh, I'm so dumb. I didn't even notice. I didn't even notice they finally eaten this world, so I didn't need to jump at all. I was gonna say, I jumped because I need to get back over here to, to try and slow down this march over here, and to stop them from going this way, because as long as the capital's okay, and a good chunk of the rest of the galaxy will be fine. We can lose some worlds and still be okay. Uh, and also, I do have some backup fleets. Um, uh, yeah, backup fleets almost ready, so we can merge them. So I just needed to get over here. Didn't need to jump though. So that was dumb. Okay, let's kill this fleet. We are actually doing better than I first thought we'd do. I, I already knew we'd be okay, ish. I really wish I didn't spawn here. It was, this has been so awkward. But other than that, we have been thinning out their numbers a lot. So their expansion has drastically slowed. We can take out this, which we should be able to. The backup fleets are moving in now. Then we can try and destroy these. It's going to be a long fight, but I think we're going to make it. I'm also going more and more into Forge Worlds right now because it's a bit too late for tech. Our tech is okay. <laughs> Double the cost at the moment. So it takes like 10 months to get one repeatable done, which isn't the best. But yeah, as many alloys as possible. Our alloy production can be improved drastically. We're, we're almost getting plus 2,000 per month at the moment. We're just shy of that. So if we can just force that a little... And it's a shame I have to pick between the Forge and the Blade, because I definitely want the Blade more than the Forge. The Forge will just give us a chunk of alloys every few months. Well, uh, how long is it? Sorry, every few years. Oh, it's only 900 days for that one. It's less. Still, that's really nice, but no, I need the speed right now. Even though it is causing problems with my battleships kind of headbutting the enemy, I do need to be able to get around as fast as possible. That's annoying. That spawned right next to us. Yeah, the strike craft just removed so much damage. The backup are about to follow us as well. Yep, yeah, we're okay. We're okay. And I've said it a lot of times, and perhaps it's just trying to um, cope a little bit here, but... Ugh, oh, losing so many worlds. This is a good one. Oh, no, this is the world down here, isn't it? Yeah. Well...
Well, the storm's gone. I have destroyed, I think, every fleet but this one over here and this one in this area. So I'm going to try and hunt that down. Uh, the Hive is now making its way through the other empires. Oh, God, they have so many more fleets. I, th I honestly thought it was uh, thinning them out a little bit more than that. Tempted to try and jump to grab that before it does any more damage, but that's going to just slow us down so much. So I'm just going to go like this and just chase them down. Oh, you know, I actually might need to jump. Catch them before they start moving. Okay, yeah, do that. Clear out all of this, then move back to there, and that's where I'm going to try and regroup again. I've changed my war doctrine to no retreat. No one survives, but our fire rate has increased further. Okay, be careful about that. You're going to have to start bombarding the world as well. Just thought. That's going to be really irritating. Okay, so... I don't think they can land on these two planets because the system doesn't have... Actually, I don't know. Can they just not land? Because of the lack of starbase. I don't really know what's going on here, but they're like in a limbo and so are the fleets over here. This is fighting the station, but the station can't seem to attack it because of the range. So most of their ground forces are just in stasis now, which is really good for us. Please stop attacking me. I'm trying to bombard your world. It is... Okay, I'm getting them all mixed up, aren't I? With the Scourge, it is a matter of just bombarding the world until it's too damaged, and then it becomes barren, right? Yes, okay. It's a shame we can't get um, Armageddon Bombardment as a Devouring Swarm. Okay, so they're all heading over there by the looks of things. Oh, that's not good, is it? Well, I can't really do anything about that, so it is what it is. Would it, be better, would it be better to focus on this world, or would it be better to ignore it for now, clear out all of this while the fleets aren't here? I've taken out so many fleets now. I think it's probably best to take out as many stations as I can while it's safe to do so, and while I'm still regrouping my fleets. That sounds good to me. So I'm going to take out all of this chunk. It'll take a while, but that's what they're doing now. Our alloys are still going absolutely through the roof, which is fantastic because we need as many ships as we can get. So I think I'm doing right here. I'm I'm now diverting all my forces over here. Anything I make, I think we should be able to take out one of their scout fleets, especially since it's a little bit damaged, not much, but even 1% matters at this point with such a small force on my side. I'm taking over all these systems, and every time I've took over a system, I leave one fleet behind to slowly start working on the planet. It'll take a very long time, but that's fine. I've missed one. Then there's... So, oh god, that's going to be five fleets just in this section. I have one over here as well. But they are running out of fleets. Obviously, they are making more from the stations and the planets, but they are struggling a little bit here. So I think we've got them on the run at this point. Just keeping production high. Just mixing loads of the strike craft craft. Strike craft craft? The strike craft ships along with loads of our regulars. For bulk damage. Oh, it's two worlds here. That's very annoying. So, something I'm absolutely in love with right now is the fact I am a Devouring Swarm. Purely because we have hull and armor regen, it makes doing all of this so much easier. So what I'm doing is I'm taking over a system, then leaving behind a single fleet to bombard the world. I think it needs to hit 100% or is it 50%? I can't quite remember, but at some point that'll be finished. Oh, good, this one over here is just finished. You can now move there. Things are going great. I've got, I think, enough fleet power here to divert one of the enemy fleets. Oh, we're about to find out. This may not work, by the way, so... Uh, it might be just about enough to stop them. We'll see in just a second. 
Okay, I'm all in. Hurry up. Is it actually on this way? Yes, it is. They are struggling for fleets. I, I've taken out another one of their larger fleets. Okay, yep, yeah, we're going to get really close. Come on, strike craft. Please. Yes, lovely. Okay, they've got another fleet down here. They've got one of the larger fleets over here. They've got, I think, at least two of the scout fleets left. They have one large fleet. And of course, they are making them constantly from the worlds and stations, but I'm trying to slow that down. We're on the verge of winning now. It's tipped massively in our favour at this point. And it isn't even 2,350 yet. They had a little bit more than I expected, though. It could have just been them respawning, but that's fine. So I have one of their larger fleets now over here. I'm actually losing Unity at this point, and my tech isn't doing great. Um, I thought we were getting way more tech than we were, but yeah. 24 months. Now, it, this is quite far into the repeatables, but clearly we're not science-focused. Okay, cleared out all of that. Though I did lose almost all of that main attack fleet. These fleets are still destroying all, all the worlds. There we are. I did destroy the fleet over here, so there's only two large fleets. That's all they have currently, of course. Once again, they are constantly making more. And I am rebuilding. I've almost got 4k alloys per month at the moment, because of course I've lost a lot of my fleet, so let's upkeep. So I should be able to regroup fairly quickly. It's a long bloody war. This is taking far longer than expected. How did you get there? Okay, well either way, this is taking far longer than expected. So I've reclaimed most of this. I've cleared out this section, but they keep on making more fleets. We're down again, I destroyed loads. It's just, it's just the same thing over and over. I'm just focusing on alloys right now. We're almost at 4k per month. We are going to win this. There's no doubt at this point. It's just taking so very long. Okay, our fleets are pretty much together now. So I'm going to push into this. That's going to leave them only this chunk of territory here. We're going to grab all the gateways back. There's a fleet over here I'm just ignoring on purpose. It's just been um, bombarding a world for ages. We have hundreds of population on that world. It's going to take a very long time for them to get through. We now have one, two, three, four... Um, star bases all acting as shipyards. A fifth is now coming up as well. So once we take all this, that leaves them only a little bit of territory left, only two worlds, and then I think that's finally it, really. After that point, we can just crush them. I was not paying attention. No, that's just wrong. I just lost loads of fleet power. I was above my navy capacity. Which fight was it then? It wasn't you. Aha, there we go. Oh, that was terrible. I didn't see them. And they just jumped right next to my fleet. So all that lovely uh, advantage we have from range was just completely nullified. Now, thankfully, at the moment, it seems like they only have one fleet. And it's currently busy over here. So I can just clear out all of this. Then leave some of my now very damaged fleets to slowly bombard these worlds. This isn't going to be a clean fight. I can guarantee that right now. <laughs> but it should be the last fight. They have two, three worlds left, I think. Two of them are currently being bombarded. One of them's about to go. And I am now taking the last bit of territory. It doesn't matter if we win well or badly. As long as we win this fight, there we go. That's pretty much everything sorted. Can you just jump there quickly just to take out that thing. Ah, oh, construction vessels again. Yeah, I'm finally dealing with that world. So yeah, it turns out the reason why there were construction vessels over here is this world could spawn them. I didn't even consider that. So, yeah, that's uh, my fault for not really uh, fully understanding the mechanics there. Okay, I've lost loads, but we are almost done properly now. That's fine. One more fleet was made. In fact, two more fleets were made, including the ones fighting. I have loads of reinforcements on the way, so there's no problem about that fight just then. 
It's just never ending, just constantly spawning more. What? I have never seen just two spawn like that before. Well, that's weird. Okay, no worlds here infected. Okay, we just saved that world. All we need to do is bombard this world and then we are done. As you can probably tell, for the last, like, half an hour, an hour, I, where I've been fighting the Scourge, I haven't really been paying attention to any of the worlds. There's way too many just to, uh, to micro, well, ma macro, I suppose. So I've just been focusing on the war effort, and wow, our worlds have gone completely out of control. If the enemy had spawned when I thought it had spawned, we would have been victorious in moments. We really would have. After this, though, we are done, and I'm claiming victory for the run. Because the enemy definitely... The enemy, aka the other empires, definitely can't stand against us now, as you can probably tell. Lots of fleets, all in their single thousands. Couple of uh, ten thousands there. Ooh, there's a thirty thousand at the bottom. It's really nothing. Here's wishing I had a Colossus. The end of the Scourge. So, with that, I am going to be ending this run because going to war with the other empires now is just going to take hours upon hours because of how they're so spread out and they have absolutely no chance. We are in the position where I can't lose, so I will be calling it because this was originally going to be a shorter video than usual with the full playthroughs because I just wanted to test out how good the hive mind is when you play wide and. Very clearly, it's incredibly good. Now, near the end, obviously, my tech kind of fell off because I wasn't really paying attention to my worlds, but at that point, we'd already proved the whole point of the thing. We have much less effect on our tech cost. We can still get loads of tech very easily, and if you spec into it, worlds don't really count for all that much. And honestly, it was super, super fun. The Scourge, super frustrating. That was probably the most dull bit of Stellaris I've played in quite some time because it was just a matter of create the ships, Clear out the Scourge, wait for them to respawn, uh, create more ships, clear out the Scourge, get a little bit more territory. And it was just very, very repetitive, and I am incredibly tired and working on the other four playthroughs still. So, that all got very weird near the end, but ultimately, I did really enjoy the playthrough, and I really hope you did as well. So, if you have enjoyed this video, then of course, likes, favourite, shares, comments, all that good stuff, helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly shows us Stellaris is a series you wish to see continued in the future. Thank you so, so much for watching. Have a lovely day and do take care. And until next time, goodbye. Maybe next time I'll play a hive mind, which is an ain't devouring swarm as well. It's also good to know that the game is running a lot better and the AI did quite well. <laughs>